God's people will experience the dominion power of light over darkness. That's what I wrote there. The dominion power. You see how cheap darkness is when you hold light. When you do not hold light, you don't make boast. When you are driving and your headlamp offs, you drive like a learner or park the car. But as soon as you can see a mechanic who will buy a hundred or two hundred and fifty naira bulb and just put it just because a car that you bought four million or five million now has a headlamp of less than two thousand spoiled and that entire car becomes inefficient you bought a car over five million and the head the the, the bulb right that gives light that is less than 10,000 naira because that, that headlight spoils you can't drive again you park your beautiful car and you can do nothing about it but just a young mechanic who comes buys that bulb from a shop your car can buy the shop but you carry the light and just fix it back and you can speed in the night as it is the afternoon someone will run this year Listen, I got a powerful revelation about speed during my retreat and the Lord told me if you see somebody driving on a speed lane slow he's either a learner or the car is not working well is that true so the concept of delay or slow movement is totally a function of darkness let me tell you something every driver knows when the road is clear there is no car and there is light what do you do there's no time for moving around and nonsense are wasting time you you hurry up that's how many of us the road will be clear light will clear off every devil standing that way hallelujah some of us it's not even you will even need to change the vehicle completely because what you have been moving with you, you can't sit inside a wheelbarrow and you want to arrive in Lagos that's what the economy of the world is trying to give you their theories will make you successful when you are 70 years old listen you cannot live in today's world with the suggestions men are giving and ever rise let me speak just economically speaking do you know in Nigeria every family has at least two or three people now who are jobless they have been retrenched they've been downsized and they are waiting out of eight people one person got a job of forty thousand, and everybody saying praise the lord what does that mean to that salary as soon as you tight it finishes immediately so how do you build a house how do you buy a car how do you get married how do you sow into the work of god you see what satan wants to rob you So that you are 50 years and you are still staying in your parents house you are coming to koinonia but you are coming from their house at 50 and they look at you and say what is this but my case is different it truly is different hallelujah how will this be achieved we are going to pray seeing then that god has released the word his word is his bond his word is his commitment throughout this year i wrote something down you may just want to listen the primary tool that will be used to achieve this is the word of god but more specifically a thorough revelation of the secrets and the mysteries of the kingdom that are responsible for the desired results the primary tool that will be used to achieve this is the word of god comma but more specifically a thorough revelation of the secrets and mysteries of the kingdom that are responsible for the desired results so there is your desire versus the mystery that is responsible for actualizing it are we together please come help me with this bottle everyone please look at this my desire is to drink water 
I give one of these little ones this bottle. They may be thirsty, but they do not know how to open it. This is the year you must match your desire with the corresponding mystery that was designed to open it up to you. We have desires. We know what we want, but what it takes to deliver the result is where the problem is. So the primary tool this year, I tell you this year will be an unveiling of divine strategies. The mysteries that are responsible for commanding results. Now, I want to open this and I do not know. And then somebody gives me an orientation. You hold this and turn it anti-clockwise. Do you know I can hold this and turn it clockwise? And it's not opening because that's not the law. Does the water hate me? Please answer me. Does the bottle know me? It's a system. Whoever can turn it will drink the water. So I use my frustration to say anytime you see this bottle run away, it can't be opened. That's what they are preaching to you all around. Because people tried it and it did not work. And then God tells you, no, take that same bottle. And he tells you, turn it. And you turn it very easily. Very easily. You are ready to take the water thanks be to god who through his mystery causes us always to triumph so everywhere they say it can be done god sends you there so the next time thank you the next time you see yourself standing in the midst of fire don't cry don't say it can be done ask how can it be done how 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 not it can't be done how can it be done are we together? God speaks to you and says, by December, you own your own house. And you sit down and calculate and say, God, I'm earning 50,000. How much is, is that go taste spent? You see, if you think like that, not even this year, your lifetime, you will not build. Are we together? You have to stretch your faith and believe God. The word of God. Now, let me tell you something. What is God's part in this prophecy? Write it down. This is the apex of this exhortation. What is God's commitment? Isaiah chapter 55. What is God's commitment in this prophecy? If I'm doing business with you, I have to know what my commitment is and what your commitment is, right? So this is what God says in Isaiah 55 verse 11. Listen. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It says, it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing I sent it. So God is telling you his own part that as far as I am concerned, my integrity over this prophetic word that is your year of triumph is guaranteed. My word will not return back. I will not bring you at the beginning of the year and mock you. God is too big to mock you. He's too big to play with you. Play games with your mind. No. No so shall my word be one more scripture because from the mouth of two or three witnesses a matter is established are we together jeremiah 1 verse 12 jeremiah 1 verse 12 amplified says for i am alert and active watching over my word to perform it so who is the performer who is the performer write it down that's his part the part of God is the performer. The one who forces that word to come to pass. He said it. He said it to us as a family of faith. That it is our year of triumph. And so we have believed him. His own part is to perform it. Make good his bond. Are we together now? So what is your own part? Because usually this is where the equation fails. I want you to pay attention. Take what I'm about to tell you as prophetic instructions. Eight instructions God gave me during our retreat. 
eight instructions and he said if you keep this and tell my people to keep this it will truly be a year of trial so please take very seriously these eight instructions Bishop Oyedeko said um, those who drive are taught by all kinds of people you call them coaches and drivers and, and all of that but those who fly planes those who train those who fly planes they call them instructors you fly a plane based on instructions there's no emotions to it it's exact you can time the landing of a plane with the fraction of a second are we together now i can't guarantee that if i ask you to drive from here to your house you may arrive in 10 minutes but when you are in the air i can time that you are landing 707 and 707 on the dot the tire is touching the ground because of instructions instructions give you accuracy 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 instructions do, doesn't leave discretion do this and this will happen don't do this and you will not suit this instruction number one what is my part what is my part in partnership with god to make this year a year of triumph second chronicles 2020 that's instruction number one believe in the lord and believe in his prophets write it down that's the first instruction believe in the lord and believe in his prophets those who disregard prophetic instructions will hear it bad this year arrogant people who think when the word of god comes from a man of god it's a word they join all these these junk journalists that write nonsense about every man of god to mean when a man of god speaks he's just ranting no god has always used the instrumentality of vessels to speak his purposes to people believe in the lord your god what does it do to you establishment believe in his prophets what does it do to you prosperity so the first instruction from god if we are to experience a year of triumph is that we must believe in the lord by the way you are, if you are not born again here by the time i make the altar call please i want you to run because that's where it starts from believe in the lord your god so shall ye be established then he said believe his prophets to believe his prophets doesn't mean to agree with them take them as true take what they are speaking as the word from god for as long as that word bears witness with your spirit the holy ghost confirming it then you take it and act upon it accordingly you're going to be receiving instructions here you're going to be receiving principles here be childlike be childlike and receive it and you will be surprised the kingdom is for children he said let the little children come to me right and do not forbid them for for such is the kingdom of heaven except you become like one of these little ones the bible says you cannot enter you can't experience the kingdom unnecessary big manism and pride is what will cause people to weep and languish believe in the lord your god so shall ye be established believe in his prophets so shall ye prosper so this is not the year to come for koinonia now that does not mean you should throw your brains away please let's balance it are you getting what i'm saying believing a man of god does not mean the person says remove one shoe put it on your head and walk around uh -uh. remember the holy ghost is in you are we together now the holy ghost is in you bearing witness with everything that is being spoken so i say to believe a man of god with respect to his walking with god paul said follow me as i follow after christ meaning if i am not following christ don't follow me are you getting the idea now because many people have been indoctrinated wrongly with this issue of believing prophets they believe what you believe what they taught you about money and you are broke because what they said was a lie so don't just believe nonsense and say this is what i've said uh, believe provided the man has a track record of working with god that's what qualifies him to be able to speak with you 
so that somebody does not carry i'm saying it for the sake of the thousands online so that one pastor does not carry this and go and harass his members and say even apostle joshua selman said this now all of you go and bring 10 10 000 naira and give me the bible said believe me that's not what i'm saying that's manipulation and witchcraft hallelujah you follow a man of god as he follows after christ so you don't just follow him blindly you check in front of him to see who he's following if he's following another strange spirit you turn around are we together instruction number two this 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 is the, my notebook for the retreat I, I came with it directly so that i'll read it because it came with fire from the throne and it's good to read it as it came number two the second instruction the second key your own role is that you must cultivate a passion a passion to thoroughly understand the principles of the kingdom you must cultivate a passion for understanding an appetite for understanding fight your areas of ignorance like a cancer this year no assumptions no assumptions every gray area in your life deal with it ruthlessly i'm not getting this thing for five years i've been acting like i know it i sit down at the feet of the master and i learn how this thing works cultivate a passion for understanding the bible says they are alive to those who find them to find them means you have to search for them and the bible tells us how proverbs 18 verse 1 it says through desire a man having separated himself that talks of focus 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 one leg here trying to read one book you read one page and then you come back after five months the year will end like it did last year and every other year you must give it your attention do you know the reason why many people never learn we are too distracted now please don't misunderstand me but i have to say this you have to be careful with the internet this year say amen, amen. number two you have to be careful with your phone this year your phone may be the enemy that will stop you from triumphing you have to be careful some of these things that distract us be careful with unnecessary hilarious movies you are watching nigerian film you have 10 cds say i must finish it you set a goal to finish those films and then you are not doing anything with your life you must passionately pursue understanding it takes time it takes time you will need to study you will need to buy books you will need to listen to teachings again and again don't just say I listen to it again mm -mm. again and again there are some of my own teachings I've listened to one tape over 500 times believe me when I tell you this one just one koinonia teaching over 500 times God is my witness I'm not exaggerating there are other messages I've listened to one tape I will tell you almost more than a thousand times I'm not exaggerating You have to be passionate except you want to behave like a herbalist this year but if you want a predictable result be ready to spend time notice I didn't say in knowledge most of us are already aware you need understanding to know how to engage that principle is God helping us instruction number three let's hurry up what is your part number three you must be willing to be obedient and consistent write it down the third key god gave me for myself and for us two scriptures please deuteronomy 28 verse 1 and 2 and then james 1 25 deuteronomy 28 verse 1 and 2 and then James 1 25 the willingness to obey and to obey consistently you don't tithe in January and then the next time you come in October you don't get results that way 
you don't pray today and then sometime in may you just say let me go for prayer band meeting that's when you remember that you have not been praying you, there must be consistency Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2 and it shall come to pass if thou shalt do what hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord to observe and to do all his commandments which I commanded this day listen when you observe and do them then the following will happen that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth verse 2 and all these blessings so they are there but they will not come to you automatically shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shall hearken to the voice of the Lord everybody say obedience say consistency yeah. you don't do devotion today and then after two weeks you now kneel down and repent and just read two chapters and kneel down and repent again March you 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 change all these games this is the year you have to be serious please prophesy to yourself say I'll be serious even with the house of God there are people who are not serious you come for koinonia now and then you sit down later you say you are busy what are you busy doing you are busy suffering because nothing is working I must be consistent do you know no matter how little your efforts are if you are consistent you will get more results than somebody who comes up with an have you seen people who come up with elephant projects they just come out of one three-day fasting and say today i will read five books per week ten chapters per day i will pray three hours and while they are saying it someone is watching in two weeks you will say bros sorry oh i i remember you making that statement don't come up with elephant projects elephant projects is why people are not consistent like now most of you had retreat from december to now the fire is still hot so you are making statements that don't make sense god is saying calm down i say god just allow me or leave me run the way i want to run and you won't even reach february this year i must pay the school fees of 10 students god is saying be careful just start with say, god leave me it's my heart now the third person is already asking you and you are saying please don't talk to me listen i want to show you why people are not consistent they are not consistent because they are, they are not they don't set goals that are reasonable i'm going to be saving hundred hundred thousand per month mm -mm. apostle has said we should save how much is your salary your salary is thirty thousand how are you going to save hundred thousand are you a thief you see it's not realistic i'm not saying don't plan but you, you have to take sensible steps it's like a Jewish child saying i must drive now that's an ambitious goal but it's not realistic so please go back and edit your plans to be reasonable and invite the holy spirit to help you this year i must be a millionaire in dollars respect money and plan well don't be a fool and do stupid things you know I, I'm, I'm saying this as a warning I'm speaking to so many people you have to be wise I'm showing you why number one we are not obedient because you'll be frustrated you will even tight again take your growth in sensible logical steps Lord I will obey you I can dedicate one hour praying and I'll give my heart to it the day God grants me grace I will use that whole day to stretch don't say me and eight hours Lord if I don't pray eight hours kill me that's what you said during your retreat you would have been dead from 2nd of January because the only time you prayed eight hours was your retreat you have not even prayed one hour since that time don't make foolish statements emotionally are you getting my point now be careful Lord if I miss Koinonia one day this year break my leg Dude, we say all kinds of things that don't make sense of course God is merciful so he just looks at us like a, a child talking to the father but you have to be wise that's why people cannot obey they yoke themselves with instructions that are too hard to obey at the moment I must give apostle a seed every every Friday a Jimmy a seed every Friday my hatred a seed every Friday Lord that's my covenant with you be careful God didn't ask you You're, you are you will get there one day but your salary is five thousand 
How do you do that? Praise the Lord. Are we together? So obedience and consistency. James chapter 1 verse 25. Please quickly. James 1 25. Let's hurry up. James 1 25. Look up please while I read. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, the Bible says, and continueth, continueth, not just that he looked at it once, he continueth therein. He, being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, what is his reward? This man shall be blessed in his deed. Consistency will produce results consistency will produce results don't commit yourself to anything you know you cannot continue ask questions ask the Holy Spirit to help you number instruction number four you must maintain a robust prayer life write it down a robust prayer life a healthy fiery prayer life the bible says and the fire upon the altar it shall burn day and night listen this is a year when there are forces of darkness the arsenals of hell are out to eat and spew out anybody it can find there's no room for carelessness are we together now why do we need to pray to maintain our relationship and our contact with God why do we need to pray to maintain our discernment why do we need to pray to command things to be why do we need to pray to challenge the forces that be to keep way to give way you must pray there are there are wicked spirits you can only imagine how many devils of darkness plan to destabilize koinonia destabilize our lives to make sure that people don't come to misrepresent us you've got to pray listen let me tell you something if you're a pastor here let me teach you a very big secret I thank God for Koinonia Koinonia has a robust prayer department many of you are part of it and I thank God for the leaders great guys and so many people this is a ministry of prayer there are prayer giants here but nobody's prayer for me can substitute for my personal prayer life are you hearing what I'm saying there are many lazy pastors and I'm challenging us there are many lazy church members I know they will pray for me where are you going koinonia prayer band oh please pray for us so you see that attitude this year will not go well because there are instructions you must hear by yourself nobody can hear it for you there are many lazy men of God who don't pray they say we have prayer warriors praying for me all around some of you even sow seeds to the men praying and say please this is just a small seed to buy orange juice while you pray it will not substitute your spiritual laziness history is full of men who did not pray and the fatal disaster that happened to them let me tell you anything that affects your prayer life has truly destroyed you not will destroy you if at this point you are listening to me your prayer altar is dead you don't need a word of knowledge you are under attack just know it not from god from hell you i don't care what the excuse is you don't you don't forget to eat you don't forget to bath you don't forget to dress you don't for there's nobody working for the government who says i forgot that i'm supposed to go to work today because every time you are tired you remember salary are we together now this prayerlessness and spiritual laziness and say i'm not you see, i'm not into all this i'm not the ministry type me I'm, I'm not the ministry type you must be the ministry type this year because victory is for ministry people if you are not in ministry this year forget about victory please take what i'm saying seriously say i receive grace say it inside and outside i receive grace to be on fire in the place of prayer you have to create times listen 
I know we are all busy. Don't get me wrong. I'm a very busy person. Most, there are many people here who are working. Some are students. There are people all around. If you are waiting until it's comfortable, you will never be consistent. You have to, you understand your life. Come up with a program. I'm a night person. I'm like a dog in the night because my daytime is busy. People will not even allow me to concentrate. I can't tell you I'll pray effectively in the day. So the night time. When unbelief has reduced in the earth, people are sleeping. All the people who cause unbelief to fly like magnetic waves are sleeping. That's when we settle things. We, we, we make things be. That's, my, that's good for me. There are others, the nature of your job. If you pray like that, you will be sick. So you won't say apostle is doing it and you do it like that. There are others, what you just need is to just make sufficient contact for the day. And then one day that you have a leave, maybe in a week, you can use that day and just settle and catch up for the week. Are we together? If you don't create a system, you will not pray. Most of us here, you can spare some time in the night, except you are lazy. You were praying in the night when you entered relationship. That prayer time now became loan time. Be careful, God is watching. You have to, you have to balance that thing and tell the brother and say, brother, I love you. But you see, from this to this is a time for prayer. We can readjust it, but you can't just say, uh -uh, yeah, well, even God knows that we're in love. Be careful. Demons don't know you are in love. And that's where the issue is. Because these are the little things. Please don't just laugh. Listen carefully. Most of us, our night times are for recreation, which is okay. Those of us in relationships, you are catching up time, you know, discussing, which is wonderful. I encourage it. But, but, I encourage it only if your prayer life will not suffer. If you are in love at the expense of your prayer life, you are dying. Say amen. amen. Number, number five. What is the third instruction from God to us? Totally, the fifth instruction, I'm sorry. Totally reject fear and negative reports. Let me dwell for a few minutes here. This one came strong in my spirit. The fifth instruction to see the outstretched arm of God this year. You must totally reject fear slash negative reports. Media, three scriptures, please give it to us quickly. Isaiah 8 verse 12. Of course, you know already that fear is a spirit. Don't turn there, just write it. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of love, power, and what? Fear is a spirit. You must challenge it. Do you know, I'm not against watching CNN, BBC, and all the stations and reading the newspapers and all of that but you have to be careful are we together now any report that violates your convictions you can read it just for entertainment but do not absorb it and add it to your convictions and start acting statistics have been released already that predict a lot of things the economic health of nations predict that this and that is happening there's, there are already predictions that there's going to be almost a 10% job, uh, what they call it, downsizing. Thank you. By the time you hear that one now, you are, you are afraid because they just employed you. <laughs> it says, say ye not a confederacy to all of them whom... These people shall say, a confederacy, neither fear their fear. That means, don't say what they are saying. They are saying recession. Don't join them to say recession. Don't fight them. Oh. Let me give you a balance. Don't go to the office and when they say there's recession, you stand up and say, look, in this board meeting, there is no recession. They will fire you. That's not what I mean. But I'm saying you don't accept that as a, no, it's not a prophetic word for you. Say, I reject it. There's no recession in my life. Say it again. I reject it. There's no recession in my life. 
are we together the bible says neither fear their fears listen there are only about four or five fears that plague people number one the greatest is the fear of death number two is the fear of failure are we together now the fear of death the fear of failure really what else number three the fear of disappointment disappointment purpose is disappointed and all kinds of things these are some of the fears that we have around our fears are finite you can look at them and know that i can conquer them the fear of death how am i sure now that you you watch on B, on bbc and, and cnn people are in a bus a luxurious bus traveling someone sits down there you hear about the foolish boy that testimony that somebody gave where someone wanted to snuff a, a gun grenade look this year you must behave well praise god the things i used to snuff kill yourself automatically you know that brother needs deliverance i hope you know nobody will go and bust grenade and then lose your hand is that a mistake that was calculated by hell a day before they concluded tomorrow by this time this guy has lost i'm sure it's even intercession that didn't blow the guy up maybe somebody prayed for him some problems are self-inflicted you smoke snuff and you are not in your mind and they arrest you they jail you no year of trial are we together now no year of triumph is not caused by demons we have our wheels are you hearing what i'm saying oh they are snuffing and you are there you didn't snuff but you are still going to prison some of us are so careless you know that there are thieves around you your best friend is a thief your your other friend is a smoker the other person is is goes to a herbalist the other person is is a lazy man look at and you are the, you are serious you can't have a year of triumph brothers and sisters let's not play games you have to be serious edit your association there are people you have to wave goodbye this year they say why say because it's my year of triumph totally reject fear hebrews chapter 2 verse 5 verse 15 just write it these are scriptures since it's not projected hebrews 2 verse 15 and deliver them who through fear have all their lifetime been subject to bondage there is a correlation between fear and bondage every time you are afraid you are kept in bondage if you are afraid of death you will not travel to go and see your loved ones you are thinking what if i die have you not heard of people who were about to eat dinner in their house as they were just they just finished serving the meal a tractor a, a a trailer just entered and killed all of them your confidence is not in refusing to get on the road your confidence is in the name of the lord i shall not die but live and declare the bible says right i said before you life and death blessing and cursing choose life i've chosen life that's why i don't smoke it's not just i chose life i cho i've chosen life that's why i don't drink hello i must say it you drink you have chosen death you smoke it's not and i don't care what it is e-cigarette um, um, um real one you are dying and another angle let me come in with another dimension gluttony is also on your way to death let me balance it are we together excessive food does something to your spirit man i'm not saying starve yourself don't get me wrong excessive food there is no champion i know who is a master at eating go and search history no champion i know you are temperate in all things balance yourself don't eat things that 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 cause trouble in your body many people have eaten their ways to their, their, to their grave they call it prosperity you buy two uh, uh, uh what they call it two whole chickens only you add malt add vigil 
add yogurt, add chips. And you eat it and say, look, when I was poor, I suffered. Now that I'm rich, you are not enjoying. Choose life. Prophesy to yourself, say, I choose life. I'm not saying don't eat. They serve you a chicken, eat well, but be temperate. Be temperate. And do you know, hey, Jimmy, the Lord shared with me a revelation during my retreat. Do you know why many people get sick from food? Because we are disobeying what the Bible says. He who does not walk is an advice. It's an advice. It's not a warning. I'm advising you, if you don't plan to walk, don't eat. Because eating without walking will do something to your health. Oh, come on. It's not, we just think God is warning us. It's an advice. Believe me, brothers and sisters, find out from people who don't walk and eat. They don't stay healthy. I'm not a doctor, but ask the doctors among us here. You are just eating because the life works based on the principle of give and take. You are not giving anything and you are receiving. If you don't walk, don't eat. The same way they say, if you drink, don't drive. If you don't walk, don't eat. Try this and see how healthy you will be. Most people eat, but don't walk. Mentally, they are not walking. Spiritually, they are not walking. Physically, they are not walking. You eat by 10, you wake up by 12. You know what you are doing? You are dying. Great leaders are healthy people very healthy people because leadership makes you very diligent great leaders are healthy people alive and agile you see someone in his 30s mid 40s or 50s and you see him breaking down he wants to call you he's raising his hand as if he's sick food brought that kind of thing you have been eating and you have not been working do you know i, I studied this thing i'm telling you i took out time to study it a professional doctor a dietitian was talking about all of these things. People walk and don't eat. I mean, they, 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 they walk, they eat, and they don't walk. Say, I walk. And that revelation came from the fact that Jesus has done everything. So we should not do everything. That is true. But you must understand in what context. It doesn't mean you lazy around and move around. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Jesus did not die to produce lazy people. Jesus himself said, I must walk the works of him that sent me. You will never become great in life being lazy. I'm talking about fear, but I'm saying these are some of the things that sabotage our lives and keep us in fear. You are now afraid of your health. Oh, what if they say I am this? Do you know, if you just obey the Bible, you don't need to fear death. Do you know why God created fasting? Even medically speaking, medically speaking, people who fast periodically are healthy. Your body needs to take a break from all these things you are just junking in. Yeah. You buy a crate of minerals and finish it in three days. No, you fast. If you have no spiritual reason to fast, I tell you, I don't mean fast like don't eat. You can just take a day and say I'm just on food. Just to, just to make my body feel healthy. We have been trained to feel when you eat so much you are rich. No, no. No one will die here this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. And none of you will kill yourselves this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's hurry up. We're almost there. Instruction number six. The sixth instruction to experience a year of triumph is be patient but persistent. Write it down. The year of triumph is for those who will be patient. Impatient people who hear it this year. You must be patient. Hebrews 6.15, Galatians 6.9. Please, quickly.
be patient. It says, everyone read. One to read. And so, talking of Abraham, after he had patiently endured, did what? After he had patiently endured, I know God has spoken that it's a year of trial. But you don't wait and between this week and next week, you just say, I don't have a testimony, that's it. Mm -mm, be patient. Over your finances, be patient. Give God time to work things out for you. Give favor time to come to fruition in your life. Impatience will destroy many people. So after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Galatians 6 verse 9. He says, and let us not be weary. Don't gas out. Let us not be weary in well-doing. Why? For in due season we shall reap. What's the condition? If we faint not. So you must be persistent. Ask and keep asking. Seek and keep seeking. Knock and keep knocking. And the door will open up to you. I pray for you for grace to continue. Some of these things I'm sharing may not make sense now. But brothers and sisters, by the time you are in March and nothing has happened in your finances and you return back home and you find out there may not be food to eat, then you go back to these things and you will see that I told you patience and persistence. It doesn't mean the word of God is not working. Are we together? By the time all of a sudden you find out that, ah, uh -uh, you're beginning to have abdominal pain and they now give you a report you don't like. I say, ah, ah, but I thought God said it's my year of trial. Patience. By the time you come for January miracle service and then nothing happens right away. Patience. Most people don't give God a chance to manifest himself in their lives. We give up on God too easily. The moment you say, oh God, this is what I'm trusting especially when you have dreams and you have experiences that show you that God is going to help you and then physically you are not seeing it that way God told you that you will get a job by December that's what you saw that's what you had and now it's January okay Lord I give you the glory I thought it was December I don't know whether I got it right or whatever that's not important I just know you will give me a job you have spoken I hold on to your word very simple instead of saying God is it that I'm, I'm hearing voices or you are the ones? All those things are signs of unbelief. Lord, I believe you, but I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able. Everybody say, I still believe God. Prophesy to yourself, I still believe God. Yeah, the circumstances around you may not look like it, but I still believe God. Two more, and then we are done. The seventh key, you must have clear goals and expectations write it down the seventh key to experience a year of triumph you must have clear goals and expectations psalm 37 verse 4 and then proverbs 23 18 psalms 37 verse 4 you must have clear goals and expectations i'm taking out time to be this simple tonight because i want everyone to receive it so that we can pray this word i really desire from my heart and god knows i prayed for you during my retreat and i told god i said god please let your people get strange testimonies let this word work in their lives and god told me well the ball is in everyone's court god is more than faithful but if we engage with him then you can be sure that the sky is only a starting point it says delight thyself also in the lord and he shall give you what so when you do not have desires expressed as goals god is not authorized to bless you set clear goals are we together now financial goals reasonable financial goals set clear goals career goals okay i'm trusting god to get a job this year i'm trusting god to start a business this year my laundry should start this is the budget i need two hundred thousand. Lord, I lift it before you. You are more than able to make this happen. I set a clear goal. I should have, by God's grace, I plan to have a cash flow of 200,000 per month this year. 
100,000 per month this year. That will cover the school fees of my children, cover my rent for a year. I set goals. I set clear goals that by the grace of God, every day I should be able to read a particular, you know, chapters of scripture. I set clear goals. When you don't set goals, you will never achieve anything. Proverbs 23 verse 18. Proverbs 23 verse 18. It says, for surely there is an end, and thine expectation shall not be cut off. I have an expectation for the ministry. I have an expectation for my life. Are we together? You're a businessman, have expectations. You're a career person, have expectations. Oh, I'm due for promotion. And I believe with all my heart that this year I will be promoted to become an operations manager. Lord, I involve you in this. Thank you. My goal is that by the end of this year, I should have finished my MSc. I should have finished my PhD. My goal this year is at least I should be able to write three or four papers of international repute this year. My goal this year is that I'll be a serious student. I'm on three point, maybe 3.35. And my goal this year is to make five points first and second semester and to rise to a two one and then see how i can take it from there sensible goals my goal maritally speaking is to get married or to be a good wife my goal is to give birth don't just give birth set it as a goal so that you can gather the resources to manage the bible says no man intending to build a house you want to marry by June and you are wasting money in January. You will not marry. You set it as a goal. Goals give us focus. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That way you don't waste resources. There are many wasters in the body of Christ. Wasting everything that God gives them. You waste your brain. You waste your resources. No. Set goals. My goal this year is to access the healing anointing. God has called me into the healing ministry. But I have not seen that level of healing. That may be your goal. And my goal this year is I want to focus on the healing ministry and trust God to access that grace so that I can become a blessing. My goal this year is to sharpen the prophetic dimension God gave me. I'm tired of talking to people and one out of every 20 is what comes to pass. I need to sharpen my accuracy. Goals. My goal this year, I'm tired of being broke at least even if i don't become a millionaire this year let me understand the laws of wealth and abundance my goal this year in preparation for marriage is to study on motherhood study on wifehood i want to be an award-winning woman my goal this year is not to be a foolish man i've been a foolish man for many years but now i want to calm down and understand what it means to be responsible my goal this year is to move out of my parents house and get a house of my own. I want to start with a self-contained. I want to be responsible this year. That's a goal. Are we together? My goal this year is to stop gossiping and making trouble and design a good life for myself. I'm tired of talking about people, going to people's homes to disturb them and be a nuisance to them. I'm ready to be serious. My goal this year is to be a greater person of integrity and character. I found out that I love God, but maybe I'm not quite a person of integrity and character. I want to work on it. Do you have goals? You must set them. Are we together? I challenge you to set goals. Please set goals. They will guide you in what to do. And they will help you know the things you should not be involved in. Oh, my goal is to start ministry this year. Okay, this is what I'm seeing. This is how God is helping me. My goal is to expand this year. My goal is to write a book this year. My goal is to do this and that. My goal is to be a more effective worker in Koinonia. I'm tired of absenteeism. I'm tired of carelessness. I want to give God my best today. When you set goals, you authorize God. I have goals. My life is littered with goals. At every given point in my life, there's no carelessness. 
I know what to do after this night. I know what to do tomorrow. My week is already prepared. My month is already prepared. The year is already prepared. I'm not sitting down wishing. Of course, you will adjust the goals eventually. But you, have, you must have a skeletal description. So nobody just comes and says, wow, I want to come and waste your time. Have goals. And finally, the last point, Psalm 23 verse 5, you must walk conscious of the anointing. Oh yes, oh yes. Triumph, you can't rule out the anointing. Psalm 23 verse 5, walk conscious of the anointing. It's projected. Thou preparest a table before me, in the presence of my enemies he says thou anointest my head with oil and my cup overflows there is a relationship between the oil on your head and the cup on your hands there is a relationship between the results you get on your life and the unction and the grace that is upon you hallelujah this is not the year to ignore the anointing i know that as a ministry we honor the place of the anointing and the ministry of the Holy Spirit but in a greater way listen there are some of us who we think the anointing is just for falling down and coughing out things no sir the anointing is God's ability it's his help in your life are we together now if you are trying to climb a staircase and then it's not working and I hold your hands I have assisted you the anointing is God's assistance in your life to multiply your results and in many cases to even produce it in the first way the anointing multiplies your result by a factor that you cannot even consider i expect the anointing to walk over my life this year i expect the anointing to walk in the ministry in every area expect the anointing to walk in your business expect the anointing to walk in your family don't sit down and expect life to be casual don't draw your graph arithmetically draw it spiritually hmm. in the realm of the spirit two plus two is not four it depends on what god adds to the equation two plus two can be one thousand god can complete the rest that's what his grace is all about so don't walk as if you are alone listen he said for with god with god with god without god many things are impossible but with god I told God during my retreat, I said, Lord, I want to walk with you like never before. I believe that if I walk with you, my life will be episodes of signs and wonders. Brothers and sisters, what you see us enjoy as a ministry, among many things, is the lavish benefit of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. When the anointing is upon your life, it's upon your life. You will command unending results. Unending results. The things God has done in my life already from January till now are almost enough. If he never does anything throughout this year again, I'm grateful. Expect favor to work. There is an anointing. Expect favor to work, brothers and sisters. Expect the healing anointing to work in your life. Expect the mantle of honor to work in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Believe in the anointing many people ignore the anointing because we think it's not necessary don't get into that kind of business i believe in the anointing acts chapter 10 verse 38 says how god anointed jesus even jesus had to be anointed to be effective how god anointed jesus of nazareth the crowds that come to this ministry the thousands that follow from all the nations of the world is the anointing how much publicity can you do is the anointing are we together the results and the testimonies the miracles the signs the wonders the influence the prosperity everything is the anointing you must make up your mind to embrace the anointing for every season there is a grace that goes with it you not only receive the prophetic word you receive the grace that makes it happen if i send you i have told you the message but i must give you the money you can have the message and not have the money you will still not do anything if I send you and I say go and buy me biscuit after I've told you what I want and you are ready to go 
but then I, I know how much biscuit is cost then I'll give it to you and sometimes I will give you more in case the price has increased hallelujah I don't know about you but brothers and sisters this is my year of triumph I believe it with all my heart God is not a joker I am not too proud to accept the word of God for my life triumph in every area I'm walking in extraordinary miracles I'm walking in extraordinary dimensions of wisdom extraordinary dimensions of grace I'm already prophesying to myself you can speak your own I'm walking in supernatural dimensions of hell no sickness whatsoever I have no covenant with death no covenant with sickness it's a year my graph of progress is a straight line this year in the name of Jesus regardless of the challenges that come the wisdom to surmount them is already at work in my life i decree and declare that favor surrounds me like a shield extraordinary results by the spirit the wisdom of god defying the strategies of men that's what i call the year that's what i call 2017 i call it a year of extreme favor from january to december favor follows me like a shield The Lord is a shield for me. I'm prophesying over my year. That's what I believe. Lord, you have declared that it's my year of triumph and I receive it. I take you seriously. My year of extraordinary breakthrough. Men are rising from everywhere to bless me. This ministry is growing to new dimensions. Flourishing. Men of prayer, men of fire, men of revelation, men of influence, men of character, men of godliness. As a ministry, there's massive salvation of souls this year. Extraordinary miracles by the hand of God. Diligent workers, men and women who love the purposes of the kingdom. And whatsoever Adam called it, that was his name thereof. No sorrow this year. I exempt it from my life. No sorrow this year. I exempt it from my life. No sorrow this year. I exempt it. The anointing goes before me. The anointing goes into every month, making every crooked path straight. Can you rise up and turn all this into a prayer? Name your 2017. Name it, come on. Everything that represents triumph for you. I can't be falling sick this year. No, I reject sickness. I reject living from hand to mouth by the wisdom and the favor of God. I'm an extraordinary man of God. Are you praying? I access deep dimensions of revelations, deep dimensions of the anointing. The miracle working power of God is lavishly at work in my life. A greater dimension of His presence upon my life. Greater signs, greater wonders, greater testimonies. I pray like never before. I fast like never before. I study the world like never before. I rise to new levels of influence. My light is shining. Gentiles come to my light. They are kings to the brightness of my rising. Favor all the way. Favor all the way. Favor all the way. By the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm a well watered garden. In the name of Jesus, I refuse to fear the affair. Recession is far from my life. Recession is far from this ministry. In the name of Jesus, no death, no death, no death. The earth is obedient to my voice. No death. I rise above every enchantment. I rise above every witchcraft. I rise above every necromancy. The activity of the dark world. Immune to their causes. Immune to their spells. Prophesy. My year of triumph. Celebration all the way. This is a year that I serve God like never before. This is a year that I give to the kingdom like never before. I'm a kingdom financier. 
in the name of Jesus, the floodgates of heaven are open over me. This is a year of strange visions, strange visions, strange encounters with the Holy Ghost. Are you praying, Koinonia? You're declaring over your year. Every department in this ministry is functioning at optimal level. In the name of Jesus, we record groundbreaking testimonies of the hand of God. Koinonia is contributing in a major way to advancing the kingdom this year. Massive salvation of souls by equipping of the saints. Say the sound of mourning and regret will never be heard in my tent this year. Lift your voice and pray. The sound of mourning, the sound of regret, financial woes, family woes, failure, never part of my life this year. Please take it seriously. You are creating your reality. No tears of sorrow, no tears of sorrow, no tears of sorrow, no tears of sorrow. I stop it in advance, I stop it in advance, no tears of regret, I stop it in advance, no tears of sorrow. Number two, I must emerge victorious over every battle. I will not lose one battle this year. Lift your voice and pray. No, 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 no. Not a financial battle. Not a marital battle. Are you praying, Koinonia? Not an academic battle. Thanks be to God who causes me always. Always to triumph. Are you praying? There shall be no losses. There shall be no losses. There shall be no losses. Thanks be to God who causes me always. Who causes me financially? Who causes me spiritually? Who causes me in ministry to triumph? Hey, na, 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 na. 
Hallelujah. Listen, we are praying. Listen, times of triumph. Listen, times of triumph are also times when war must end because a victor must be there. Are we together? There are many of us who have been dragging with too many things. Today is as if you are the winner. Tomorrow is as if it defeated you. You are going to prophesy. This must be my year of completion. A victor must emerge over this issue. Lift your voice and pray. Supernatural completion. Over that sickness. I can't be healthy today and sick tomorrow. My year of completion. Over that project, my year of completion. Over my family, my year of completion. The hand of Zerubbabel, the hand of Zerubbabel, that begun this work, that same hand must complete it. Is my year of completion. year of completion by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Listen. There are many of us, God started speaking to us, but you got part instruction and the other part has refused to be downloaded and so you are grounded. You are going to say, Lord, this is the year when your voice will be clear. I'm tired of confusion in my life. I must hear that voice saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it. Lift your voice and pray. Confusion. I'm tired of wondering whether I should take a job or not. I'm tired of wondering whether I should be in Zaria or not. I'm tired of wondering whether I should be in ministry or not. I'm tired of wondering whether I should marry or not. Whether I should be in business or not. Lord, let me hear your voice. And with it, let me hear the instructions for my next level. End confusion in my life. End confusion in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray for the spirit of boldness. The Bible says the righteous is as bold as a lion. The challenges that many of us will see, let me tell you the truth. When you see it physically, it will look like a Goliath. But David ran to him and said, you come against me with your spears. Now is the time where you need to run to some challenges. Whether they are ready for battle or not, you say, no, I'm ready now. Finances, I'm ready now. Spiritual life, I'm ready now. Lift your voice and cry for an impartation of boldness. Boldness. No more fear. I will face it. No more fear. I will face it. No more fear. I will face that business and triumph. No more fear. I will face this issue of joblessness and conquer it. No more fear. I will face my academics and conquer it. No more fear. my fears I confront them I no longer will run away from them I face my fears I face my fears I face my fears it's my year of trial hallelujah 
fire is burning in this place. Two more prayer points. You are going to say, Lord, give me speed. I ask you for it. Give me speed. I don't want to move at the pace I moved last year. Lift your voice and pray. Give me speed. Speed in ministry. Speed in my spiritual life. Give me speed. The result of 10 years. Let me produce it this year. The result of 10 years. Let me produce it this year. Give me supernatural speed. Speed, speed, hasten your word, hasten your word, hasten your word over my life, hasten your word, hasten your word, hasten your word. Hallelujah. One last prayer point. And then we are done this night. Hold on. Hallelujah. Listen. One last prayer point. The Bible says the light shines in darkness. The light shines in darkness. From January till December, everything you are going to be hearing on this pulpit will be an unveiling of divine strategies. God instructed me this year. He said, let the people of God understand these mysteries. My assignment to Koinonia this year is to open you up to the strategies that produce giants in this kingdom. I will show you mysteries that if not oh, that God showed me, I will not even teach it. I told you there are personalized dealings of a man with God. There are secrets that are for a man and his covenant with God alone that control great power god said don't hide anything from your people teach them the mysteries you have kept the mysteries that has produced results in your own life and that you have learned from people mysteries that are not obvious mysteries that are not taught in pastors conference mysteries that are not taught to the public you don't buy them in tapes the secrets behind the making of men you are going to pray and say father may my eyes see may my ears hear and may my spirit receive these divine strategies lift your voice and pray for every koinonia service lord i'm not ready to waste my time this year divine strategy the mystery behind the making of giants the mystery behind the making of stars the mystery behind men becoming systems on earth. I just had something in my spirit and let me add it as a prayer point and the Lord is saying that we should pray and ask him to roll away every shame this year listen to roll away every shame you can excel in one area yet another area is not working Naaman was a captain but he was leprous I like you to say Lord every shame every 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 shame it must be rolled away this year take it from my life Lift your voice and pray. I don't know what area you have seen shame, but brothers and sisters, cry to the God of heaven. Take the reproach away from my life. Take the reproach away from my life. Take the shame away from my life. That's what the Lord is saying we should ask him. Take away the shame from our families.
Hallelujah. Let me prophesy over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that every prophetic word from God as revealed may it come to pass in your life this year in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare that everything that hitherto has been a hindrance to the word of God performing in your life this year it is swallowed up by the message of God I decree and declare over your life hear me every legal access satan has had to make sure prophecy does not come to pass on legal ground the blood speaks for you this year in the name of jesus christ listen one of my assignments this year is to make sure you prosper financially you must criticize me say whatever I must make sure the people of God prosper this year. I pray for you in advance. The wisdom and the favor. These twin forces that have produced wonders in the financial realm. The mystery of wisdom and the mystery of favor. May it work in your life this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare. You will not lose any single battle this year. You will not lose any single battle this year. I borrow the prophetic words of God's servant, Bishop Oyedeko, and I prophesy to you that this year your case is different. I say it again, this year your case is different. Hallelujah. A level of result listen I trust God with you that 10 years track record of results God will compress it and produce for you in this year in the name of Jesus Christ some of you before April your goal for the whole year would have been achieved before April believe me when I tell you before April your goal for the year would have been achieved and I pray for you the spirit that makes many of us start well but never finish well every year is like that you start you are excited by April you've cast out by December you have given up I pray for you from January I'm praying for you that every year will be a multiplication of grace and strength and vigor the grace to follow up on your goals I release it upon you in Jesus name finally I pray for you listen there is a role that the Holy Ghost plays in making men mighty we honor him in this ministry you know I pray for you the kind of alignment that must happen between you and the Holy Spirit the kind of alignment spiritual alignment that you must come into to be a career of divine power and divine results receive grace for that alignment in the name of Jesus Christ lift your hands and bless the name of the Lord Hallelujah. now everyone stand please everyone stand there are people here this is our first meeting for the year and I told you the basis of exper experiencing a triumphant year listen is that you are born of God to be born of God means you have come to a personal knowledge of Jesus Christ what he has done for you I don't want to take for granted that there are people there are several people here and all the overflows outside and there are thousands of others listening online I believe that there are people here who are saying man of God I have been waiting for an opportunity to run to Jesus and what a good way to start there are others who are saying man of God I used to love the Lord oh I love the Lord but for some reason I rise today I fall tomorrow my life has gone haywire I can't even say I'm a Christian I don't want to start this year like this some of you may be visitors who came from far 
as I speak to you, the Holy Ghost is telling you, that man of God is talking about you. Wherever you are, inside all the overflows, I want you to quickly, please, we have just a, a minute or two for this. Make your way to the front right now. God bless you. Don't wait for anyone to call you. Young and old, Jesus is calling. God bless you, mommy. God bless you. Keep clapping, they are coming. Lord, I don't want to start this year the way I started last year. I don't want to play games with my destiny. If you are coming from outside, please run. You can open the doors, just clear the way for them to come. Keep coming. Some of you are still seated and God is speaking to you. You know you need to start the year well. It's a year of triumph. And triumph only starts with Jesus. He's giving you a new beginning. Keep clapping, Koinonia. It's a sacrifice. You are encouraging them. For those who are indicating their interest for the Lord Jesus Christ online, right where you are, you may not be able to walk forward, but you can listen and participate in the prayer. Hallelujah. Keep coming. We may start the prayer, but keep coming. Hallelujah. Now, thank you so much. There are people here, young and old. Listen, I know that some of you are making a decision genuinely for the first time. I know that others may have made a decision, but you want to concretize your decision. You are saying, I'm tired of playing games with God. It doesn't matter what category. I want you to pray this prayer. It's a supernatural prayer with all your heart. Lift your right hand. And say after me, Lord Jesus. Please don't pretend it. You are not, you are not reciting a poem. Lord Jesus, I love you. And I believe in you. I ask you to forgive my sins. Be my Lord and Savior. I receive your life into my spirit. And I declare that from today, I'm a child of God. I am born of God. Make my life beautiful make my life glorious make my life victorious father i pray for these ones i'm praying for you now help them please help those under the anointing i stretch my hands towards you and i pray for you right now i declare your sins forgiven and i declare that the power of sin over your life is broken help them please those under the anointing i declare that you will experience a new dimension of grace with God. I speak over you in the name of Jesus that the strength of darkness, the strength of the flesh, the strength of sickness, the strength of sin is broken over your life in the name of Jesus. From today, I pronounce you victorious. I declare it in the realm of the spirit. You begin to walk in perpetual victory. And I speak over your life that it is your year of triumph. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you for making this glorious decision. It's the best decision. Now just an instruction before you leave. It is important for you to be planted in the house of God. Don't just make this an emotional decision. If you don't stay within this area, you must find a Bible-believing church and be part of the workforce. That way you are established in the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you stay within this area, why not? You are more than welcome. Now, I want you to follow the lady waving her hands. They'll have your details. And um, we're going to communicate more personally to you in due course. Please make sure that you put all of the details. That gentleman uh, on, on uh, the guy with the monkey jacket, the Lord is taking away the reproach from your life and your family. That's what the Lord is saying. I should tell him. I don't know you, but in the name of Jesus... The Lord says, I should tell you no more. He leaves your family forever. You will return with outstanding testimonies in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you. Please follow the lady. She's directing you. God bless you. Let's appreciate them, Koinonia. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can. 
to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Katekatos. Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and the kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.